Good afternoon, everyone, and uh, thanks for joining the webinar. Uh, we will start. Um, so I'm Marion, and I will uh, introduce you today to spectral analysis. Um, just to introduce myself, uh, I'm French, and uh, I have an engineer degree in food science and a doctorate, doctorate in analytical chemistry. And I'm working for CAMO, and um, I'm in charge of the training and consultancy. So today we will see what is a spectral data analysis, and then we will uh, follow the path of um, analyzing spectra. So first with data collection, and then preparing uh, the spectra. And then some, um, some analysis. So we will see principal components analysis and SIMCA. It's a classification method. So now let's see the spectra. So now you have collected your spectra and you want to start the analysis. The first thing to do is to inspect the data. And the basic first thing to do is to look at them uh, as raw spectra and to detect if you have any abnormality, maybe some um, baseline that is not good, or a peak that is in addition, or no, a noisy spectrum. So you need to rescan. And then you can also start to look at the different variables and know like some areas that are um, containing a lot of information because you know that this is a peak uh, that is corresponding to a component and uh, it's important in your analysis. Or maybe you can know that some areas of the spectra are noisy. So this you can remove them. And then about the distribution of the sample. So I said that we need to have extreme and um, samples. So that the samples that might be around here and around here. And a lot of samples in the middle. Uh, this is to look like the normal distribution, that is the best distribution for all the analysis in general. But what is really important is that you have a symmetrical distribution. So then you can already, when you look at your spectra, whole spectra, identify some outlier. So you, will, uh, you have to keep that in mind that this is a very important first step. And then you have to do some statistics. It will help you to first find some region or area that, com that are varying a lot. So if there is a lot of variation, you may think that there is a lot of information there. So this is what you can see here with the percentile uh, box plot here and here. And um, maybe you can also check for the scat if there is any scatter effect. So if there is a scatter effect, we have a plot into the scanner. Uh, where we can plot every spectra um, in, in front of uh, the med medium spectra. So we can see if there is any deviation of the medium spectra and see the scattering. So here we can see that we have a scattering effect like that, and here as well. And then uh, when you have been uh, checking for that and you have been uh, making a diagnosis of if you need pre-treatment because if you have some scattering effect, you need to remove it. So there is different way of transforming uh, the spectra. So in the Instrumenter, we have uh, quite a lot of different um, way to, to, to modify the spectra. And uh, it will help you to make the, a better analysis. So the first one and the easiest one is the normalization. So it's something that is a transformation that um, takes every spectra and um, will um, divide uh, the spectra by a constant. And the way to find this constant in can vary. You can make a normalization on an area, uh, a mean normalization, maximum normalization. There is a lot of different options, but it will work so it's a raw orientated uh, transformation and it will correct for 
sorry, it will correct for a uh, scale um, uh, variation. Then we can make some derivatives. So there is different order for derivative. Here we have in blue the raw spectrum, and then in red the first derivative, in green the second derivative, and in purple the third derivative. So there is no strict rule on which one will give uh, best results, but usually the second derivative um, gives good results because it helps to improve the spectral resolution. As you see here, we can see that we have two peaks that are superimposed, and if we use the second derivative, the two peaks will appear here. Uh, well, this is not in the same um, in the same direction, but you really have exactly the same um, position of the peaks. So it's, it helps to remove some background of formation, so some background uh, scattering and it resolves uh, better uh, the spectrum. Then we have more complex uh, correction. So here is the example of multiplicative scatter correction, MSC. So here we will correct each spectrum, and we will uh, find two coefficients for the slope for every spectrum, and the intercept. And every spectrum will be corrected by their coefficient. So this is the equation here to find the coefficient, and here to correct um, the spectra. So here we get, we can, see, we can detect some scatter effect. Here you see that it is much more, more, more and more broad um, at the end of the spectrum, and this is after MSC, and we have been correcting both for baseline correction and um, and slope effect. Effect. 